Oh, hello. Uh, so I'm not live yet. Yes, we are. <laughs> now you are. Now you are. Yeah, we are. Because I know. I know when I'm live. See, I've been live for five seconds. Welcome, everyone. And welcome, welcome, welcome. So I just need to figure out where now I get to mm -hmm. um, watch myself. Editor. And I, <laughs> I'm just going to keep talking until I can figure out where my director's arm again is right here we're going live on TikTok. all right um yes and today is going to be a great day we have all sorts of um really cool subjects to talk about and we're just going to give my director two seconds here to figure out um where i am and so how is everybody today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday is a beautiful day. And <laughs> all right, everyone, we got it. Robert, so do you know what we have to push next time? Yep. All right, we got it. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. It is Wednesday. We have our live stream edition of Gray Hair Can Do. Today, we are going to talk about all sorts of things. Hello, Linda. Good morning. So today we have Let's Talk Tattoo, but we're going to talk about more than tattoos. So today for the next hour, we are going to be talking about my adventures to Marshalls because I went there yesterday. We're going to be um, talking about some tattoo information. We, um, I have some aftercare tips I would like to share with you and all that good stuff. We have some comments we're going to talk about um, that I get a lot off of my videos. And also, too, we're going to see what's trending on YouTube. We're going to talk a little bit about TikTok. And um, we are just going to hang out. We're going to have fun. Today's coffee mug is a big old coffee mug. And I love extra size, extra large coffee mugs because, I don't know, they just make me feel um, warm and snuggly. So today's coffee mug, I got this at Home Goods, and it's the little... Um, it's the Halloween theme, but look inside. There's like spider webs inside, and I love it. And I have lots of coffee. All right, I did have somebody comment and ask me, do I drink my coffee black? And the answer is yes, I drink black coffee. I have been doing that now. Gosh, I can't even remember how long I've been drinking my coffee just black. I used to, um, I used to put cream and sugar in my coffee. And for some reason, somewhere along the evolution of my coffee drinking, I decided just to drink it black. So every morning when I'm talking to you, I have a big old mug of black coffee. So yesterday, yesterday I went um, after my live stream and I met my very good friend Jamie for coffee. And we always have the best conversations you know she's the type of friend that i can sit down and i can tell her anything i mean anything from like my my deep darkest secrets to my hopes my desires and i never feel judged i never feel like oh my gosh what is she thinking about me and i think we all need a friend like that hello maggie something from australia welcome welcome so I think we all need a friend like that. So we met at a coffee shop um, in um, not too far from my house and I ordered a smoothie. Now, when I order a smoothie, I expect um, fruit and ice all blended up and um, all nice and fresh. And what I got, which was actually a little amazing to me, was I got like a melted popsicle. And I watched them make my smoothie and I'm like, hmm, that's not really how you make smoothies, is it? Because they, they like poured some liquid in a cup, then they added ice and then they blended it. And so while I'm sitting there having this great conversation with my beautiful friend, I'm like, I don't like my smoothie very much. So I got over my melted um, popsicle smoothie. But I gotta tell you, you know what? There's just certain things in life that I expect um, high standards from and my smoothies just happen to be one of them because to me it's a um it's a treat and my little treat was just kind of like blah so from there i went over to home goods because i had to find some new curtains and i have hung up new curtains right here so that way my lighting is really good and I had to use the restroom. You know, it happens. I just had a, a melted popsicle smoothie. 
And I go into the bathroom and I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, my Lanta, what happened to me? I looked um, somewhat like a raccoon. I looked like I had just watched a remake of Old Yeller and cried my eyes out because half of my eye makeup was like underneath my eyes. And I'm like, okay, Jamie, my really good friend, did you see that while we were talking or did this all happen from the coffee shop to the home or um, world market? So I'm like, uh, I have to change up my makeup routine. And I did. And what I did is just a little bit is I decided that um, during my makeup uh, journey, what I had decided, and you can see right here, is that I, not EV Vlogs. Hello, welcome. So I decided what was happening is that my eyeliner that I was using, because I was using a black eyeshadow for my eyeliner, that it just was not staying put. It was moving all over my face. And I decided to go back to what I had originally been using before I started my makeup journey. Because again, what I was, um, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you very much. Um, because what I had done is in my makeup journey, I had decided that I did not want like a heavy black liner. And so I'm like, I'll just use eyeshadow instead. And in theory, it should work. And in reality, it just didn't work for me. So I decided this morning, I did my makeup. As you can see, my makeup, I did it with the MAC um, painter. This is the MAC long wear um, liner. Yes, it's not that difficult to say, but apparently I had a hard time saying it. And what it is, it's just a little jar of um, eyeliner and I take a brush and then I put it on. It's gonna stay put and I'm not gonna have that raccoon, I just cried my eyes out kind of look. And yes, I mean, I, I wanna stay away from the heavy dark so I'm not putting any of it underneath, but I am gonna put it up on top. I mean, I have to wear a makeup that's gonna stay put. So I changed up my makeup a little bit this morning. And because I'm always doing something different, I'm always experimenting with my makeup that I decided that before I put on my foundation, I was going to put on my highlighter. I got that pink Maybelline um, eraser, which I really like. So I put it in my spots that I wanted it. I put it up on my forehead. I put it down my nose. I put it under my eyes. I put a little under my chin because that's where I wanted to make it brightest. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, Lonnie, you know what? Do something different again, because you know what? That's just what you do. Why stick with something you already know that's gonna work? So instead of blending it in a little bit and getting it kind of like all situated where I wanted it, I decided to put my foundation right over the top of that and then blend it in all together. Don't know why I thought that. In theory, I thought it would look great. What ended up happening is I had on my foundation that looked like I was ready to join a mime team and do um, and do some street performances on the corners of New York. And I was just like, oh, Lenny, what did you do? You just fixed your eyeshadow eyeliner. You know it's not gonna run all over your face. And now you have completely white foundation on. I was just like, okay, don't panic. You got this, girl. So I blended it all in. I added just a little bit of um, bronzer and I got my foundation back to the way that it's supposed to look. So I was pretty happy about that. So I'm sitting there in the bathroom at World Market trying to wipe off all the makeup that's smeared all over my face. I finally did that. I went, I got my curtains, they're hung up, so I have nice lighting today. Super excited about that. Then I headed over to Marshall's because I had some stuff that I needed to return. You know, it happens. I always have something I have to return. And I found this stinking cute top. Now, TikTok can see it much better than you can YouTube, so I wanna show you my top. 
all right? This is a free people top that I found. Wait, you have to see the back. Super cute. Hello, Rose. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, super cute top, I think. I mean, it's lightweight. It, um, look, it has the little design on the sleeves. So if I keep my sleeves down, you can see that. And it has the two ties. Here's a little side note is I have been known on my lives to experience hot flashes. And so I just take off my, my sweater. Today, I went all daring. I just have a cute little bralette underneath. So if a um, unexpected hot flash happens, I have to sit here and um, I have to sit here and um, experience it in its fullness. But I really liked this top. It had I have it with um, some high waisted um, Levi jeans. These are again. Let me show you. TikTok can see it better. But these are high waisted Levi jeans, and they're super cute. They're baggy. And then, of course, I have them with my Doc Martens. And this is the outfit that I had in mind when I found it. Now, I found it for $24.99, right? Great deal. I'm like, this is awesome. This little top is only $24. Bucks. Originally, it, on this Marshall tag, it says, thank you, Linda. I love this top. On this tag, it says that it was originally $38, which is not the case. I mean, no, Marshalls, this top was way more. It was actually $98 because it had the little free people tag on it. So I got this $89 or $98 top for $24.99. And I have to tell you, you know what? I'm feeling good. I am so excited. I actually found another t-shirt from free people that was like 14 bucks. So I'm like, score, score, score. I had just found some cute free people stuff at Marshall's. I kind of was like coming out of my slump of my sloppy, icky, sweet <laughs> smoothie. That would be Miss Indy. And, you know, from being at World Market with my makeup all over my face. And I'm like, yes, this is it. You know, I got my little happy walk and I'm walking up to the cashier. I wait in line so patiently and then she's like, I can help you over here. And she was, you know, I would have to put her probably my age. She was a woman probably my age, maybe in her early 60s. And I hand her my two items. And I'm like, I have to return these things and these are the things that I want to buy. And I'm feeling really good about myself. And then she looks at my top, this one I'm wearing right now, and she's like, is this free people? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. You know, look at this glow on my face. I am so excited. She's like, I don't really like their style. And I'm like, what? She's like, no. Nah. She goes, I, I think they're overpriced um, and they're not that cute. And I'm like, oh my gosh, lady, you're insulting the clothes that I'm just buying. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, that's, that's thank you for that information that I did not ask for. And so she's like, but this top is okay. And I'm like, no, sweetheart, this top is more than okay. This top is amazing. And so then I'm like, ah, oh. and I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, Lonnie, you have two choices. You can do one of two things. You can sit there and you can school her and be like, you know what, ma'am, miss, whoever you are. I just happened to be wearing my outfit today. I had on a sweatshirt, some pants, and my shoes head to toe free people. I mean, my outfit was free people. I was buying free people things. And so I'm like, all right, you can do two things, Lonnie. You can sit there and you can be like, you know what? I find you offensive. And um, it says, Tina says, hey, Lonnie, at work, can't really watch. I'll check out later. Love you. Um, love the look great. Oh my gosh, Tina, thank you so much for jumping on and you are amazing. Rose, I hate it when people do that. Absolutely. And so I'm sitting there and you know what? I always like to, you know, I'm not afraid to say anything. I have a quick verbal response to just about everything. It's just who I am. It's part of my personality. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? And so as I'm sitting there and she's like ringing up and I know I had this look on my face because I was like having a conversation with myself. I was like, 
you know what? I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to say anything because you know what? Truthfully, at the end of the day, and I thought about this because I knew I wanted to share this story with you, but I knew, um, but at the end of the day, I just didn't care about her opinion. I didn't, her opinion didn't stop me from liking my style. Her opinion didn't stop me from absolutely loving my cute little top that I am rocking today. But you know, the thing is, is like the moral of this story, I know I kind of got off a little bit, but the moral of this story is when you are out and about and you're giving people your unsolicited opinions, sometimes whether you know it or not, you can actually um, hurt somebody's feelings and you can actually have a negative impact on somebody. And I guarantee you, she had no idea what a free people fan I am. And she had no idea that, you know, just about everything in my closet is free people. But that doesn't matter. The, what matters is, is that she was looking and she was just kind of poo-pooing my style. So I always like to, yeah, great customer service. Exactly. You know, nothing like you're going to buy this, whatever, you know, you do you. But I just let it go. But I do want you all to know that if you're out there and you're shopping and you like something and you um, want to whatever style it is, just remember it's your style. It is um, your look. Because again, now um, Rose says, I hope you have a great day, but I have to go. Thank you so much for joining Rose. I appreciate you. Anika says, if you haven't, uh, if you have not haven't something nice to say, just <laughs> keep shut your mouth. Oh, and um, who am I to judge? Absolutely. I did get a great bargain. So again, you know what? To me, it's like I cannot and will not give negative people my energy. All right. I am not. I could have sat there and schooled her and been like, that's really rude. You know what? I'm a free people fan. You should keep your opinion to yourself, but it's not going to change who she is. And the only thing it would have done is again, taken my energy and um, I just didn't want to do it. So I like my free people top. It's super cute. I cannot wait to wear it with more different things. And at the end of the day, I'm telling you right now, that's all that matters is that I like it and it was a great deal and whatever she thinks, she thinks. You know what? I would not have worn what she was wearing and clearly she would not wear what I was wearing. All right. So yesterday, um, I, we talked a little bit about the Met Gala and I showed you my favorite outfit um, from what I had saw or what I had seen that was a horrible English way to put that sentence together and I showed you Cardi B's outfit and I thought oop, oop. and I'm getting my other monitor today so it's going to be easier for you to see that but I found another outfit that is that tops this one all right I found another outfit that I am absolutely over the moon for and it's Pedro Pasquale I have the biggest schoolgirl crush on him. It's this smile. Look at that smirk. And if that smirk doesn't tell you I'm going to get you in trouble, I don't know what does. And I am absolutely over the moon over him. I know I am not the only woman in the world who is it, who is. But I'm telling you right now, I am making it official. I have a crush on this guy. Uh, Mr. Fett says, ask yourself, why should the opinion of someone I don't know affect how I feel about me? The day that you ask yourself that is the last day you will care about the negative opinions of others. Absolutely. And you know what? And the whole thing is, it's like I personally on my journey, I enjoy being different. I enjoy not being a part of the masses. I enjoy my individuality. And with my individuality comes, when you're not like everybody else, you open yourself up to more judgments and more criticisms. And to me, every time I get that, it just means that my individuality is shining through. 
So instead of being like taking those kind of things as a negative, I take it personally as a positive sign that my goal in life to be absolutely individual is working. So back to my, my boy crush. Ugh. All right, Pedro, if you're out there and you need a date for your next event, I can find a style that will match yours. Ugh. So fangirl. He is just dreamy. Connie German girl, good morning. All right, you, I don't know if you saw it or not, but I'm talking about my, my new boy crush. Boy crush. He is my boy crush. So, I don't know. It would be really funny. I think it would be really funny if, um, if he found out about this and joined our live one day. You never know. You never know. I was on a, a live one time, and Rosie O'Donnell joined my live. So, you just, you just never know. Hello, Linda. All right, so today before we get into our main topic, I do want to, usually I pull a card um, it, that makes me think a little bit more, but today I'm going to pull one of Dove's self-love shower affirmations. Because sometimes I think not only do we need to maybe like rethink our thoughts, but we need to also say positive things to each other. So again, I have them, um, Linda said you would, you would make a nice couple. See, that's what I'm saying. You know what? I am, I, I think I'm just as quirky as he is. So we would like have this great energy together and he is drop dead gorgeous. And I, you know, I, I think we would, be, I think we'd make a good couple. So Pedro, if you're out there, give your girl a call. All right. So I think we need to sometimes just say something nice about ourselves. So today I'm going to reach into my little bag of my Dove shower affirmations with my left hand. And the reason that I'm using my left hand again is because um, when you use your dominant hand, you have a tendency to make conscientious decisions and I want my subconscious to pick the card. So with my left hand going in, let's see, what card do we want to tell ourselves today? All right, it's... This one right here. Um, a bro okay, this is what it says. It says, I bring light with me wherever I go. Beautiful. And we have to remember that. We have to remember that we bring a light. Just like the lady at Marshall's, she, she brought a light. It wasn't a very nice light, and it wasn't a very bright light, but it was still her light. So we do bring light and I like to let my light shine. That is part of like my whole platform is just being transparent, just being me, no holds bar, just being like, hey, you know what? This is who Lonnie is. And um, just sit back, relax and enjoy the show. And so, yes, oops, I want to leave this out. So bring your light with you wherever you go and just make sure it's a bright light, a bright, happy, nice light. Amy says, hi, Lonnie, I've been watching your videos and just joined YouTube. Is that a waxy poetic necklace you are wearing? I love it. You know, I get a lot of comments on my necklace. And what this necklace is, um, this was given to me by two dear friends after um, my dad passed away. No, it was after my mom passed away. And um, they found this at a local's farmer's market. And these are two typewriter keys, an X and an O. And this reminds me of my mom and dad. And I wear this a lot when, um, this is my favorite necklace, besides the one that Robert and Brandon bought me when I was little, or when they were little. Um, but this is, um, reminds me of my mom and dad. And so if you ever see me live, or if you ever see a video and I'm doing this, it's because it's like, it, it, it just kind of like gives me that connection to my parents. And so I'm like, beep, 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 beep. and that's where I got it. So it was a local farmer's market here in Temecula. Oh gosh, probably about six years ago. And I have looked over and over and over again um, for this necklace, either online or one like it. I've looked on Etsy. Um, and I've never found anything quite like it, but it's just typewriter keys. And if you find one, um, I would definitely recommend it. I love it. So yeah, it is unique. And my friends, 
they were beautiful people for giving that to me. And I don't think that they really understood the, um, the meaning that I attached to it when I got it, but I absolutely love it. And that's what I did. Um, okay. So let's get going. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about some tattoos. Amy says really quick, I've been looking for something similar in honor of my son who passed away two years ago. I got my first tattoo in honor of him. Also, Amy, first and foremost, foremost, my heart goes out to you. Um, I, I, I it's just, I, I, there's nothing I can say other than I love you and I'm giving you a hug. I, um, I have not experienced that. I've experienced a lot of loss, but never that. Uh, I watched my parents go through what they did when my sister passed away. So my heart goes to you. And I'm telling you right now, Amy, if I find anything remotely like this, I will put a post and um, I will help you find one because it is absolutely 100%. It helps me always think about them just by doing that. But I'll find you one. Don't you worry about that. All right, so we're gonna talk about tattoos. I love tattoos. I have been getting tattooed now for 28 years. I was 30 years old when I first got my tattoo, when I got my first tattoo, and what I got was barbed wire around my ankle. And you know what? I, I, I was going to, let me see if I can find a picture. I, I'm sitting here and I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to lift up my pant leg and show you my first tattoo. But let me just see if I can't find it here first because I think that that's just a little bit easier. So I got, um, let's see if I, no, it's gonna take too long. All right, let me show you my first tattoo that I ever got. Yeah. Uh, such a lady, such a ladylike live stream, right? It's like, all right, this right here, that right there is my very first tattoo. And that was harder than I thought because I was having to balance on one leg. So I was 30 years old and I was in a marriage and it was not a good marriage. I've, I've spoken of my marriage before and it, it doesn't really reflect who I am, who I am now, but it was definitely who I was then. I was in a very difficult marriage. I was, it was a, it was a very dark time in my life. Let's just put it that way. So I'm 30 years old. I'm separated from um, my husband and I'm like, I want to take my power back. I felt powerless. I felt like I didn't know who I was. I felt trapped. I felt trapped in my marriage. I felt isolated from the world. And I'm like, I'm going to get a tattoo. So I called my sister and I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to get a tattoo. And she's like, oh my gosh, so do I. I'm like, ah! Because my sister was my ride and died. I mean, she was my yin to my yang. She was absolutely, we were like, we were like this. So we're like, yes, we want to get a tattoo. And we, um, don't ask me why. Don't ask me why we didn't figure out about getting a babysitter. But we gathered up our kids, uh, my niece, my nephew, Robert, and Brandon. Robert was like, I don't know, four Brandon was probably two and we headed out to the desert. We went to an outlaw biker shop and we got our very first tattoo. And I got that barbed wire around my ankle because I wanted to represent where I was and who I was at that moment. And at that moment, again, I felt, I felt isolated. I felt trapped in this narcissistic marriage and I felt like I was being separated from the world. And that was my stamp of like, this is where I am. I'm always going to remember this moment and I'm never going to do this again. And it started an entire lifestyle of tattoos. And then, you know, my ex-husband and I reconciled shortly. He absolutely ripped me apart over getting that tattoo. And so I, you know, I, I finally decided, you know, it's either going to be him or my tattoo. You know, it, it, it wasn't really like that, but it, it came down to it where um, I got rid of him and I got more tattoos and it was the best decision I ever made. So I went from there, you know, I got my back done. I have my stomach done. I have behind my ears. I have both um, sleeves. I have my hands. I have both calves. 
I mean, I have a lot of tattoos. So, and I never in a million years, when I was sitting there getting my very first tattoo, never in a million years thought I would have as many as I have right now. But it's where my journey has led me. So when I started social media and when I, especially when I started TikTok, I kind of like felt like I had this unique opportunity as a woman in her 50s to speak to a generation of people who, whose parents perhaps didn't have tattoo experience. You know, maybe you were 18 or 19 or 20 years old and you're like, I have a question about a tattoo, but I have nobody to ask. You know what? My parents don't have tattoos and they don't understand the philosophy behind a tattoo. Um, they, they, they had nowhere to turn. So when I started my, my social media platform, it was one of the things that I really embraced and I really have just absolutely loved being a part of the community. And I have, I was looking back at my TikToks and it's amazing how much of my content is revolving around that. And so any advice that I give you, any advice that you hear, anytime I talk about tattoos, I do come from a place of like trying to give you motherly advice. I give you the same advice that I gave Robert and Brandon. I will never... I, I mean, I hate saying never because that's such a finite word to say, but I will always, I will promise you this. I'm always come from, I'm always coming from a place of love. Let's just put it that way. Um, Connie says I was 50 when I had my first tattoo. I love it. I Connie, I think that's amazing. Linda says I was in my thirties when I got my first tattoo to celebrate my divorce. See, it's a way to get over trauma and it's a way to help heal. So I have deemed myself the tattoo mom um, on social media. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of influencers out there who fill a motherly role on social media, and I think it's beautiful. And I just happen to have a real unique sort of niche where mine has a lot to do with um, tattoos. So we're going to talk a little bit about tattoo aftercare. I, to me, the first week, the first month, the first three months are so important on taking care of your tattoo to have that longevity to make sure your tattoos look good for years to come. I got my shoulder tattoo, this one right here. I got this tattoo in 2007. That is how long um, Unique Broman says, thank you for filling that role for us who don't have mothers in our lives. You know what? I, you, your statement is beautiful and I am absolutely honored in, to even remotely fill. I, I, I can never fill the shoes of anybody's mom, but I will always come from a place of love because I mean, I know I miss my mom every single day and, um, I, I know that it's something that nobody can ever feel that, but I absolutely 100% will shower you as much love as I can in replacement of that. So I got this one and I, when I got this one, I was still, uh, I was still drinking and I wasn't really taking care of myself as well as I take care of myself now. But, um, one thing I would have done differently, I kind of got off subject a little bit, but I would have worn more sunscreen. So tattoo aftercare, immediately after getting your tattoo, um, you have two options. I think you have two really good options for healing your tattoo. I'm not telling you which one is right, and I'm not gonna tell you which one is wrong. I'm just gonna give you two, op uh, two options of the ways that I heal it, so then that way you have those options. The first way is with good old fashioned saran wrap right out of the chair. You go home, you wait like an hour, you take it off, you wash it with uh, fragrance free soap. Now I used to say to get like a bar of unscented dove soap. And I have since um, through you all filling me in on stuff, uh, realize that if you use a bar of soap, that has a tendency to get a little bit more germs and bacteria on it. So I would recommend getting some liquid soap. You wash it up and then you use some fragrance-free lotion. 
I have been using Vaseline Intensive Repair Lotion for 30 years, however, 28 years, however long I've been getting tattooed. Um, and they, they heal fine. I carry lotion with me because I, um, if you're out and about, let's just say you have a new tattoo and you're shopping at Marshall's and you found a really cute free people top and you're like, oh my gosh, my, my tattoo is just starting to be like, and you know what I'm talking about. If you have a tattoo, it's that dry, like pulling, like you just feel your skin just, just pulling. So what I do is I run into the bathroom, I wash my hands and I will put Vaseline, I'll put my lotion on all day long. I don't like that dry feeling. And um, so I put my lotion on first week all day long. Just make sure you wash your hands and then you put lotion on. The second way you can heal your tattoos is with Saniderm. Now Saniderm is a second skin. I am not associated with Saniderm at all. I never used this product until Austin Maples, who did my, my American traditional tattoo, I never used this until he asked me to use this. So I'm like, okay, Austin, I mean, you know best. I love your tattoos, I want it to heal well. So I came home and I used this and it was amazing. It, it really, I like using the Saniderm product but I also like using the old fashioned way. And for me, what it really depends on is one, the tattoo, two, the placement, and three, what my artist recommends. You know what, if I get a tattoo from Brian and he's like, no, he goes, just heal it the old fashioned way. Ah, that's how I'm gonna heal it. If I get another tattoo and they're like, yeah, use Saniderm, I think it's gonna heal really well. I'm gonna use Saniderm. So I used Saniderm, no big deal, right? So I did a little, um, I did a TikTok, I did a reel, I did a short, and I'm like, here's how I'm applying Saniderm to my new tattoo. And you'd think it would just be like, okay, well on YouTube, they went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over that one. And right now, that short has been seen 3.6 million times, which is awesome, which is amazing but you have no idea how much I got basically attacked for using Saniderm. I mean, I became the Saniderm's complaint department. You know, people were like telling me like I should fix it. And I'm like, I don't work for Saniderm. I'm just showing you how I used it. You know, they're like, they're, they were questioning my integrity of even my tattoo journey. Like for some reason, because I use Saniderm, all of a sudden I'm a big sissy baby and I'm not as cool. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Just because I put it on there doesn't mean anything. You know, people were like, like you shouldn't tell people what to do. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got like so weirded out. I'm like, I went back and I watched the short and I'm like, never once did I tell anybody to use this. I again, just showed them how I was doing it. So it's just crazy to me how people get so offended over, recommend, over recommendations on how to heal your tattoo. Again, I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just showing you a couple of different ways that you can. Then, okay, so you either heal it with your Saniderm, with your lotion. I suggest drinking lots of water because you want to keep your skin healthy. And then you let your tattoo heal. I stay out of the sun for at least three months before I let my new tattoo see sun. When I do after that, I have sunscreen caked onto my tattoos. I mean, I don't care. I, I it, My mission is to preserve, <coughs> indeed, <coughs> is to preserve my tattoo for longevity, all right? That's the number one important. Now, I did a, um, a TikTok and not too long ago where I was talking about just, you know, what people say. People are always telling me that I'm going to regret my tattoos when I'm older. And I'm like, how much older do you want me to be? I'm going to be 59 this year. And I think that that statement should no longer apply, period, to anybody of any age, let alone me at 58 years old. So 
needless to say, I did this um, TikTok and I showed myself spraying on Aquaphor because Aquaphor has spray on products. And that went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs on TikTok. And right now that one has been seen 2.6 million times. So that leads me to believe that there's a real need for like, uh, you know, what do you do with your tattoos? So anyway, so I use spray on Aquaphore on my healed tattoos because it's kind of like to me, it's kind of like the same thing as slugging for your body as I do slugging for my face because I put Vaseline on my face every night now and I absolutely love it. I am going to say it again that I'm going to go out on a limb because I really am starting to see a difference in my neck. My neck is the one area that I was always like, ah, oh, you know what? I should have done something about my neck sooner. I should have put sunscreen on my neck sooner. And ever since I've been slugging and putting Vaseline on my neck at night, I have seen a difference. So anyway, I digress. So Aquaphor for me is like the spray on is like slugging for your body. It keeps it nice and it keeps it moist. It makes my tattoo shiny. Absolutely love it. Well, Aquaphor um, got wind of that and they actually s reached out to me and they sent me this big old PR box of stuff from Aquaphor. So I thought this would be super cool to open it up with you today. Now, me and my infinite wisdom um, did not think in advance about how I was going to open this box, but thankfully, I it looks like it's going to be pretty easy. So I was like, when Aquaphor sent this, oh, wow, this is so cool. So when Aquaphor reached out to me, they're like, hey, can we send you some other stuff? I'm like, absolutely. I... I was like, absolutely. Because again, I love Aquaphor for my body. Wait until you see this. This is so cute. All right, so coming out of the box, dun, 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 dun. it's like a big, <laughs> it's a good thing I have cat-like reflexes. It's a big jar, look at this. It's a box, but it looks like a big jar of Aquaphor. How cute. So. Let's see. All right. So what we have in here, so everybody can see, I got sent some Aquaphor um, repairs and protects. This is some sunscreen, but it looks like doo, doo, doo. this is little sunscreen. I think it it looks almost like chapstick. Oh, wait, so it is. It says immediately soothes and helps severely dry lips. Now, here's a little thing. I saw on TikTok not too long ago where people were putting on the Aquaphor, not the lip stuff, but the regular Aquaphor on their lips. And then they were going out in the sun and somebody had a, like a reaction to it. So I'm going to say right now, just based on what I saw on TikTok, that if you're going to use Aquaphor on your lips, make sure that you use the Aquaphor specifically designated for your lips. That is my little motherly advice for you today. All right, so Aquaphor also sent me some itch relief ointment. So if I have itchies, I can get up to 12 hours of significant itch relief. There you go. We got some also, ooh, some more Aquaphor products for your lips. Again, use the Aquaphor products specifically designated for your lips for your lips. We got um, more lip stuff, which, you know what, truthfully, I really like because I have been struggling with my lips. I need to, just like with my neck, I need to put more moisture into my lips. So um, I think that that's exciting. Lauren, I've never heard of this stuff. Can you get it in the UK? I believe you can. I would check Amazon. Um, it's in my, I'll put a link down below when I'm done, but I would definitely check this. I, I believe it's worldwide. All right, so this is the spray-on aquaphor that I showed you in that one video. Absolutely love it. So just like the aquaphor, this stuff here. Okay, let me let me just do this. Um, it's sealed, but this is like almost like a Vaseline. It has the same consistency of Vaseline. Now this, um, I've used this before. 
but when I use this, this is what really got me. So watch, you just take it and you're like, and it just puts a fine mist on your arm and then you rub it in and it seals in the moisture. I'm telling you right now, I abs just like the slugging for your face, this stuff seals in your moisture. Now, what I would highly recommend, again, as a motherly advice, if you use this, by all means, put it on straight out of the shower, lock in your moisture, and then put sunscreen on after it's had a chance to kind of just, you know, kind of blend into your skin. But Aquaphor, you are amazing. See, it just makes, I think it makes, I think it makes my tattoos really, really very like just kind of pop out then i got um oh okay so this is like a huge stick of chapstick so this is immediate relief for chapped chafed skin so if you have really dry skin or if you have um like anything that you really just need to like kind of like um the lip balm for your lips but for your skin just take this and and draw it all over that and then the last thing they sent is, oh, cool. So if you have, look how cool. This is repairing foot mask and a repairing hand mask. Now, I know for a fact, because um, I've said before that my dad was a farmer, so he worked outside a lot. And when it got really cold and dry, he would get like cracks in his skin because his hands were so dry. And this would be something I think good for that. Or if you have like your feet, like if you have like really dry feet, really good for that. So this is repairing hand masks. It's intensive hydration in just 10 minutes. Shea butter, avocado oil, and pro vitamin B5. Oh, you know what I'll do tomorrow? While I'm talking to you tomorrow, I'll put the, uh, I will use this tomorrow. So on tomorrow's live, um, I will open this up and try this. I am not gonna do the feet one for you, but I will definitely do the hand one tomorrow. So that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. So I think this is really cool. You know what, I just really appreciate it. Again, I think it's a good product. It's great for your tattoos. Um, I know that again, just like being a woman over 50, we just get inundated with products if you have tattoos, we get inundated with like, use this, use this, use this. And I'm, some products I absolutely love, some products are like, meh. But you have to find what's going to work for you in order to absolutely, again, have that longevity with your tattoos. And the most important, I'm gonna tell you right now, and this is probably, not the most popular um, one, but the most important way of keeping your tattoos looking um, really good is just to take care of your insides. You know, eat right. Um, I am, I, I, Andy, did you all hear that? That was Pam. Come here, young lady. So Brandon moved back home and he um, brought Pam, the seven pound cat. Well, Pam, rules the house. Indy is deathly scared of her. And if she gets too close, Pam will be like, back off. And that's what that just was. So keeping your insides healthy, I'm going to tell you right now, mother advice that you really either like or you won't like, but I am telling you right now, a healthy diet, lots of water. You know, if you drink too much, it's going to hydrate your skin. If you smoke, it's going to hydrate or dehydrate your skin. So just Try to have a healthy lifestyle, keep your body healthy, and it's gonna keep your tattoos looking good for decades, people, because we want our tattoos to look good for decades. Now, um, we are going to talk about some comments that I have gotten um, from all of the, all of the, um, oh, see, there's Indy, right over there. Y'all see her? So I get comments all the time good, bad, or indifferent, you know what, I do get them. And a lot of them that I do get has to do with my tattoos. And one of them that I got is from somebody who actually has, let's see if I can find it here. <gasps> he actually has troll in his username, which 
it's going to give you an idea of what kind of comment this is going to be. But anytime that, like I said, you have to have a username with troll in it. Yeah, that's just like, at least you're giving us a warning. But it's, this is what he had to say. And I did check him out. And he was probably um, a, a guy in his 50s. And it says, got a tattoo and made it her whole personality. Also, any comments like this, I'd be willing to bet, are coming from people your own age bracket. I ain't wrong there. Young folk are very accepting of tattoos, piercings, odd hair colors, and all other means of body modification. You know, truthfully, part of me on this one is um, the simple fact that part of his comment is what really got me on this comment is what I want to say is the simple fact is that he has lumped everybody into an age bracket. All right. Some of the comments that I do get that are negative are from women my own age. But you know what? They're 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 commenting negatively about all sorts of things about me, not just my tattoos. And then he's like, then he lumped all the younger people in a um, like they're all accepting. And to me, what really bothered me about this one is, is I think that we should all be looking at each other as individuals, not as women, not as men, not as older, not as younger, not as this, not as that, but just as individuals. Because I know that sometimes, um, you know, women my age get called certain names and instantly people think that we're going to come in with an attitude and while that is true i mean sometimes people do have that kind of negative attitude that doesn't mean we all do and i know i get offended when people assume um i mean i don't look like a like a typical 58 year old woman but still i still get those comments you know so i like to look at um everybody um as individuals that's what i'm trying to say all right so Kathy says, no tats for me. I was raised to believe that they look tacky and I still feel that way. My son is a tattoo artist, go figure. So I was just like, you know what, Kathy? I wonder, do you share this comment with your son? I mean, do you not look at what your son's profession is and have like a different ideology of it? Or are you so stuck with how you're raised that you refuse to grow so you know to me it's like a, it, it's just a matter of individuality and letting everybody just be themselves and that includes you know your your son your son i guarantee you has some tattoos so i thought that was kind of interesting um, let's see 22 ab8 says like the man bun biting the dust God, I hope tattoos hit the wall real soon. Indy, is she okay? Okay. All right, Brandon's back, so now he can he can watch. So you know what? Not just the whole thing. Tattoos aren't going to go anywhere, and self-expression is not going to go anywhere. If anything, tattoos and self-expression are going to become more accepted, and more and more people are going to do that. And that's really another part of my platform that I've really just embraced is the simple fact that tattoos are nothing more, um, how can it be tacky? It's art. Absolutely, Linda. You know what, but that's just it. Some people are just stuck in this ideology, you know, that that you're in a certain thing. Like, cause I, like I said, I've been getting tattooed now for 28 years. And when I first just got like my shoulder tattoo, I would be like out with a group of girls. And all the time, some guy would come up to us and be like, oh, you must be the wild one. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not me, man. I, I'm in bed by 8 o'clock. I am not wild. But they were judging me by my tattoos. You know, people thought like when I was younger and I had tattoos, I was in a motorcycle gang. And I'm like, I, did, I can't, I can barely ride a bicycle, let alone a motorcycle. I mean... So it's kind of weird and it's kind of funny how tattoo thought and ideology has changed over time. I mean, it's like, like I said, when I was younger, when I was in my 30s and my early 40s, people assumed that I was in a motorcycle club. And not to say that I have not ridden on the back of a motorcycle with somebody in a motorcycle club, but that's a story for a different day. Yes, your girl has quite the colorful past. So, you know, and again, it's all just like, it's all just about 
focusing on people for and, pu- and lumping them into categories. That's what I'm trying to say. We need to stop lumping people into categories. It just that's what drives me crazy. It just don't lump me in with anybody else. I am myself. I am an individual and I'm going to continue to be. And I think the more that we look at each other as individuals, the more we're going to appreciate each other's for our individuality. So, um, let's see here. What else did it have to say? Um, my, okay. Um, so I got the, my artist called it second skin because he knew it was going to hurt peeling it off. I got to tell you, it don't feel great peeling it off, but it doesn't hurt. If you put the Sanoderm on, you wait the five days and then you jump in the shower and you take it off in the shower, it's much easier to take off than just sitting there with dry skin. I actually put Sanoderm on one time. I put it on wrong and I had to peel it off of a fresh tattoo. That, my friend, hurt. I That was not fun. That is not something that I would actively be like, hey, I got nothing to do. I'm going to slap some Sanoderm on a fresh tattoo and peel it off. Um, so it definitely, um, it definitely doesn't feel great. But after the five days, like I said, just jump in the shower, take it off there. You'll be fine. Um, let's see here. It says, when I get a tattoo, I follow the directions provided by my tattoo artist. I I suspect he knows better than the peanut gallery. (laughs) Yeah, because there was a lot of comments. You were wonderful, Lonnie. Thank you so much. I appreciate what you do for all of us who are over 40. And you are very welcome. And you know, it's such a blessing and it's such an honor to be able to come on here and just share my life with you and just share my experiences and just be like, hey, you know what? It's okay to be quirky. It's okay to get online in front of millions of people and be like, hey, Pedro, if you need a date, give a girl a call. You know what? I don't care. And you know what? And I don't care if people make fun of my hair or make fun of my tattoos or, or think that I don't dress right. It's To me, see, the thing about it is to me, I don't come on here to be like, I think I'm this or I think I'm that or I want you to tell me this. This is not why I do what I do. Why I do this is because I just want to show you by by me being comfortable in my own skin that it's okay for you to be comfortable in your own skin. You know, I want to give you inspiration to be like, wow, you know what? I might not be perfect, but I am the best me I can be. Whether or not that's your hair, your tattoo, your size, your height, your gender, it don't matter. You are you and the only person you can be is you. So you might as well enjoy it. You know what? That's just the thing. It's like when I was younger, I was in that horrible marriage and he always made me feel bad about myself. And I was always trying to reinvent myself because I always wanted to find that version of me that he was going to be happy with. And I realized I was never going to achieve that. I was never going to get the 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 accolades back from him or even the love back from him that I so desperately wanted. And it wasn't until I left and I started my own journey and I got my own tattoos that I realized I didn't need that. I didn't need that from him or for anybody else because I can look in the mirror and be like, you know what, Lonnie, you ain't perfect, but this is the best you you're going to be and be okay with that. And that's the message that I always, always, always want to give across on a daily basis. And that's why we're here every morning, Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time until 10. Just, you know what, sharing my life, talking about stuff and trying to give you the motivation and the love for you to do the same. So today I actually um, didn't get to everything I wanted to talk about today. So we're gonna have to move some things over for tomorrow. So tomorrow we are going to talk about what's trending on YouTube because we do have a lot of cool things trending on YouTube. I'm going to talk about a little bit about what's going on on TikTok. Again, just so you know, I am not going to even remotely go anywhere near the side of TikTok where it's like a cancel culture. I'm not going to talk about any of the drama on TikTok. It's not my lane. It does not affect me and I am not going to be a part of that conversation. So it, I just don't, I, I don't want to be that, but I, you know, there's other interesting things on TikTok right now that we can talk about. And we are going to talk about my two left feet. I have a story to share with you about that. And it's pretty funny. And sometimes I think we just need to have a little bit of a lighter side to life. 
So tomorrow is um, is definitely that. And then you know what? Um, I, ooh, I did not go thrifting yesterday, so I am going to go thrifting today, and I'm going to film that. I maybe I'll show you what I got. Maybe I, I'll hold off on that. But I am posting a video this um, morning on YouTube showing all the outfits that I wore in April. April started off good. It was good. You know what? I really went outside of my comfort zone twice in April, showing my stomach, wearing some different fashions. And so I have a little video compilation of all the outfits that I wore in April, and I'm posting that today on YouTube. So... That's it. I hope that you all enjoyed our morning show live. I will be back again tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have lots of good stuff we're going to be talking about then. And remember, until tomorrow, be bright, be bold, be brave, be the best you you can be, and I will see you all tomorrow. I love you very much.